Welcome everyone to uh, another episode of uh, KQL Cafe. Uh, your hosts, as usual, Johnny uh, and Alex. Let's see if our slide. That's me. <laughs> uh, wants to move. Yeah, yeah. So as always, uh, a big welcome. Uh, today we also have a guest uh, from Denmark. For those that already have been listening, we have Morton. Um, in the show today, he will talk about uh, KQL in yeah, you know, different context, uh, not just security, uh, but how you can you know make use of KQL uh, with the uh, Azure Resource Graph. Uh, we'll share as usual some news updates that we found uh, in the interwebs. Uh, and last but not least, as always, we'll share some stuff that Jenny and I have done with KQL this month. Uh, just oh. fighting with the deck, sorry. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Great. So, yeah, uh, first topic we want to bring to your attention uh, on the 14th of October. Um, the uh, the logs for Microsoft Graph uh, have gone in uh, public preview. Uh, so we're now able to also ingest, in addition to the signing logs and to the outage logs, uh, we now also have Microsoft Graph logs. Um, and we, we, we can leverage those logs for several purposes. Uh, of course, when the bad guys come in, uh, but maybe also from an operational point of view, uh, you know, should you, for example, run out of your uh, graph API limits and you want to investigate how that happened, um, if you want to, you know, have a look at the applications, uh, you know, what permissions they are uh, working with. Uh, so definitely a, a great source. Um, strongly recommend to uh, read the blog post from Microsoft as well as from our fellow MVP, um, Fabian Bader. Uh, who already took a look at those Microsoft Graph logs uh, from a security point of view, where he actually executed uh, a number of well-known reconnaissance tools um, that are used by the bad guys uh, and how to detect uh, such activity uh, in your tenant. Now, yeah, when it comes also, to logs, yeah. It's also really interesting for uh, and not only to detect common attacks, but also, uh, for instance, uh, this week I was working on an incident response and from the Azure AD signings logs, you could see that a user was accessing the MS Graph, but in the old logs, you couldn't see what was happening. And now with the, this extension, you can also see uh, which queries did they do, uh, where, was there any data leaked and uh, stuff like that, which you couldn't do before. That's a, a really nice addition. Yeah, so whenever it comes to new logs, you know, first question is always, you know, how to turn it on and how much data it's going to consume. So first of all, how to turn it on? Uh, basically, um, go to your Entra ID diagnostic settings. Uh, there you should see that new option that you see here on the left at the very bottom um, and enable that. And uh, yeah, I'm going to assume that you are either uh, that you already have enabled uh, your log forwarding to, for example, a log analytics workspace. Uh, that could be a Sentinel workspace, but if you don't use Sentinel, um, you know, it could be just a regular log analytics workspace where you can uh, stream uh, your, your data. Yeah, let's uh, quickly put someone on mute. No, did you see Alicia? She left ah, check. Check. Good. Okay. Now, the next question, of course, is, you know, uh, is this log going to uh, consume uh, a huge amount of uh, resources? And um, from what I can tell, of course, as a consultant, I have to say it depends. Uh, it depends probably on the size of your tenant. It depends on the amount of activities. Uh, there's definitely some baseline activities where just, you know, normal operations um, applications use Microsoft Graph, but you might have your own homegrown applications that leverage your graph. Um, 
nevertheless, uh, what I can tell so far from a an average company, three and a half thousand users distributed globally. Uh, <coughs> here we see, uh, you know, the usage that we have now after 14 days. Um, I did some comparisons in other similar size tenants. Uh, so I think that's uh, quite acceptable. Uh, if you happen to use uh, Microsoft Sentinel, you, you can also use the uh, usage report uh, for it. Um, and in the show notes, I've added some additional queries. What I'm doing uh, basically here is just, you know, look at the usage uh, data. Um, and uh, I have some additional queries that also compare the usage data with the effective billable uh, data that's within the table uh, itself. Um, the queries that I, I shared also in the show notes will also provide you with a detailed overview on the consumption per day. So over time, you'll be able to kind of create a baseline and understand what will be the normal usage in your <laughs> tenant. And for Good. me, my my small tenant, I have about 700 megabytes a day because it's it's still uh, available from the internet. So it's not only depending on uh, the users you have, but also on how interesting your tenant is. Because in the end, this will log every request to your tenant. So uh, the bigger your your tenant is, the more likely you're getting more requests. Yeah. And definitely also interesting to see, you know, where those requests are coming from. So within the logs, uh, I haven't been able to actually digest every uh, attribute in the table. Uh, just for example, a WIDS uh, attribute, which I haven't been able. Uh, you will also note, uh, notice that you have app IDs, uh, so long good numbers. Uh, now the app IDs are related to uh, applications that you have in your tenant. Um, but as a little trick, and again, I will share the query in the show notes, uh, what I did, I basically uh, ran a um, query over all the signing logs and non-interactive signing logs, where you also have the app ID, but luckily also the um, you know human readable display name of the application ID. Uh, so that's how you can kind of you know correlate partially you know the application IDs. Um, the graph uh, logs, of course, do not only contain activities from users. Uh, so sometimes in the log you might have user ID, but you also might see service principal IDs. Um, again, uh, there, uh, while I was preparing the show last night with Johnny, uh, I haven't been able to, to come up um, and kind of, you know, map uh, that data. Uh, but yeah, definitely read the blog post from Fabian Bader, who uh, gives you gives you some more insights, and also on the original blog post from Microsoft, where they show some example queries, uh, what to look for. Then coming up next, um, this is uh, something I've come across, um, where a uh, yeah yet another uh, KQL um, gate gateway to Microsoft Sentinel, uh, a community edition. There's also a paid version, an ebook uh, was written. Um, yeah, lots of tips and tricks, uh, sample queries, uh, really starting from the basics again. So, you know, all these standard operators, again, uh, going into more advanced KQL queries. So, yeah, if you are a, a collector like myself, uh, definitely worth to uh, download. Uh, you will have to register. Uh, where they have published a book, uh, and then you can download a free PDF version. And of course, if you're interested, uh, you can also buy the full version. I think it's a really cool book because it's got a layered approach from seven or eight steps where the, they uh, Samik takes you from the beginning and a step by step goes uh, through KQL, uh, go where you're going through the book. So it's a nice take on uh, learning KQL. It's a recommendation to read it. Good, then next. Yes. So Defender Harvester, uh, 
a good friend of ours, uh, Olaf Hartog, uh, who does great work in uh, the APIs and in Defender, and uh, they do a lot of cool things. Uh, he was playing around with the APIs, and uh, he found out ways to uh, to grab the data from it. So, for example, detections or uh, the your uh, timeline, so that you can do. Uh, an easier uh, hunting from Excel or from Sentinel to uh, go through the timeline data, because uh, at the moment, uh, at least when I'm doing incident response, what I usually do is I make an export of the timeline of the last four weeks, because you can grab only one week at a time, and then I stitch them together, and then I use Excel to do my uh, hunting magic in there. But uh, with this script, you can uh, create easy exports, and uh, what Olaf did, he created a, a, a Go applications. Let me put it on the screen, put it on his GitHub. And from the GitHub, uh, you can download it. You can uh, log on with a device code. And then uh, there are some, uh, some uh, commands you can execute to get the timeline, to get the schema. And it, it works really easy. So let's put the command line on the screen. Now, yeah. Now, what we first have is we have the Defender Harvester. And for instance, if we want to grab a schema. So first, you actually what you need to do is you need to sign in uh, with the AZ login. He explained it a bit over here. So you can do an authentication with the device code and then you sign in with your credentials and then you can use the script you can also set up environment variables uh, to uh, store the data in sentinel or in splunk so if you run this every day then you can grab all your data you want for instance your device actions or your uh, custom protections or uh, whatever you like you can put it in sentinel to have an easier access on it so if we run the schema command the uh, 0.92 version is the latest one. And then let's go for a second to the JSON. So over here we have a JSON file. <coughs> and let's format it a bit. Over here, you can see the whole uh, schema because people are always wondering, hey, uh, do we have new tables? Do we have new uh, entities? So in here, you can uh, find all all items in the Defender schema. So you can exactly know uh, which data is there in. So for instance, if we look at ident, uh, identity, identity info, you can see that these items all live in identity info. And this is also the bit where we talked last KQR Cafe about is they added the new data. So now we have the manager and we have other cool stuff in there. But that's one. And to bring it more to actual KQL, we can do another command. For instance, if we wanted to have the the custom detections which we have, we can run this guy. Over here, I also uh, add the the files uh, variable or the files argument actually, so that it will store the results to a file. Because you can also store it in Sentinel. And then in my small environment. I have a format, uh, format. We have all my current uh, detections in here. So that way you can, uh, can see what's actually in your tenant. Another cool trick was the live response actions. Let's grab it from here, or better yet, the executed queries. Because that one is also nowadays you can have it in the report, but if you want to store it, for instance, in Sentinel, maybe to do some anomaly detection, 
you can run it also from here. So let's grab that guy. This one. Set files. Yeah, basically, uh, as far as I can, uh, if I got it right, the whole motivation for creating this tool uh, is basically because uh, although we do have a lot of data available in advanced hunting, uh, for those familiar with the Microsoft 365 Defender platform, uh, will have noticed that not all information that you see within the portal uh, or even in the device timeline is also made available through uh, advanced hunting. And uh, here, basically, you know, Olaf is kind of closing that gap. Let's call it until <laughs> Microsoft is willing to to you know uh, also bring some of the, the data that's relevant uh, into uh, the advanced hunting that's available by default. Where you know, for example, if you either winning the Microsoft 365 Defender portal or for those that are forwarding your raw logs into uh, log analytics or into a storage account yeah so yeah That's definitely a cool tool uh, and also for those that are curious uh, curiosity is what most of us <laughs> drives us uh, so if you want to understand a little bit what's happening behind the scene uh, and what data is available uh, definitely worth looking into the uh, defender harvester uh, utility yeah. good next yeah, this is something I just came across yesterday, and as our mission is to you know, share anything that sounds and smells like KQL, so I come across this uh, yesterday. Uh, it's called the uh, Fusco 100 Plus Nox. Um, yeah, it's a GitHub, GitHub hosted website, um, and it has a couple of interesting, uh, yeah, KQL examples um, for various resources, including. Uh, you know, uh, Azure resources as well as the uh, common locks. Uh, it has some uh, in the basic section. You you'll find again some basics. Uh, you know how to execute KQL, uh, and in the advanced section, you you find a number number of queries. So for those you know that don't like to reinvent the wheel, uh, take a look here. Uh, you might find something interesting or an inspiration for a KQL query. Good, and with that, we'll leave the floor to our dear guest, Morton, uh, who will talk, I guess, a little bit about himself and then about the use of KQL with the Azure Resource Graph. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. And uh, it's, uh, it's really cool to see uh, all the, the great stuff that people have built uh, and uh, also the, uh, the excitement around uh, KQL. And, uh, and it's really powerful to see uh, how uh, the different teams are also integrating uh, KQL into the, the different uh, you know, platforms. Like um, if you take, for example, Azure uh, Update Manager or Azure Backup, now you can do queries uh, from in the portal. So the, the adoption is really uh, cool, and I, I really love to, to see all that going on. Actually, uh, when you did the, uh, the, uh, the setup or the, the introduction to this, I, I actually thought of before going into the topic that, that I was uh, planning on talking today, I just wanted to, to highlight another thing that I have built, uh, which is kind of um, uh, set the scene for, for today's topic. And uh, this solution that I'm showing you here is a, a solution that I call Client Inspector. And it is out there right now for free. Uh, so you guys can uh, take a look at it. And the um, it includes a lot of great uh, KQLs uh, underneath here. So, and so far it has been downloaded 567,000 times uh, since I released it in, um, in May, uh, no, in April the 15th. So uh, it is, uh, I'm really happy to see the great adoption around this. Uh, so 
basically what it does uh, for you guys, if you're interested, it is um, a solution uh, which contains a script, a script that you can run on all your clients. It will collect a lot of data uh, uh, from the clients, and then it will send all the data into Log Analytics using Log Ingestion API. So that is Log Analytics version two, uh, the, the new API. And uh, I'm using uh, the PowerShell module that I have built that can help uh, doing this. So it is 25 functions that can help you guys bring in data from any data source that you have in your environment. So it doesn't need to be client. It can also be, you know, a TSM log or whatever you want to do. And then you can bring in the data. And then once you have the data into a, a structured format in, in Log Analytics, then you can start building dashboards. You can do alerting and, and you can do a lot of great uh, KQLs uh, on top of this. So <clears throat> if you're interested and, and you want to uh, check this out, uh, it is a complete package that contains uh, 15 workbooks, 14 dashboards, and, and more than, I think, 100 different KQL queries uh, included into this. And this is, uh, this is an example from one of my customers where the, on the left side has a server dashboard. So it is kind of, cake, it, think of it as a desired state um, KPI, so it, is, it gives you a complete overview of your whole client infrastructure on the left side. On the right side, it includes all the server platform and network around this. And when you have, when, I, when I'm saying a, a desired state, what I'm talking about here is that, uh, uh, let me show you an example of a screen. This is, uh, uh, for example, the client uh, dashboard where you can see some KPIs like incompliant BitLogger or unexpected shutdowns or uh, pending updates older than 40 days or pending updates, no driver older than 40 days. And, and, and this is where your infrastructure deviates from your desired state. So uh, it is a lot of KQLs that runs underneath here. So if you click on this, then you can go and drill into this, and then you can see the whole platform in your environment, and and you can go and and figure out what is uh, that is uh, wrong, and and what are those machines that are not uh, correct, and you can uh, see it, and and again everything in here is just a KQL where we are bringing in uh, some uh, some uh, some. Uh, the basic, uh, you know, queries and and so you can you can use this and 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 you can modify it. Of course, this is something that I'm updating. Uh, so if a customer comes to me and say, "Morten, it could be really cool to do whatever," and then we'll I'll implement it and update this. And um, I have a lot of customers that are taking this and giving it to their. Uh, end customers because it can add value to their infrastructure. So that could be a, an idea if you're a, if you're a consultant or you're a partner, uh, or it can also be something that uh, can be useful for you uh, if you are an end customer that want to have a, a good overview of this. And it doesn't cost very much. Uh, a 500, uh, 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 com 500 computers with a daily inventory Will cost you around a uh, uh, around uh, twenty five dollars a month. So I would assume that most would be able to have a, a budget for that. But it's it's just an idea if you want to start using the uh, learning about logging um, and you want to uh, introduce a desired state thinking. Uh, this could be an interesting way and a fun way to uh, to start playing around with this. So. So it's kind of a, a little detour from today's topic, but I think it, it could be of interest to you guys uh, anyway. So that, if you're that's interested- actually, Can, can I ask a question? So yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, uh, definitely, you know, just uh, 
Uh, strange, I haven't come across this. Usually, uh, I know the, these things, uh, but yeah. that, that's cool. Um, to, I mean, first of all, uh, as I have just been fiddling with workbooks today, uh, and I usually just, you know, open other workbooks to see how the mechano works, right? Yes. With the drill downs and parameters and that yeah. stuff. Uh, but my main question is, so you're you're collecting uh, information from all the clients, right? Yeah, in this um, case, yeah. So are, are you making use of the, uh, you know, AMA or MMA agents or no. are you... Basically, no, I'm yeah. using the, the, the log ingestion API. Yeah. So I can actually show uh, an, an, a, a drawing of this uh, because it is actually here, up here. Mm -hmm. Let me just uh, go up here. Uh, so here's the drawing that actually shows the architecture of what I'm doing. Yeah. And oh, sorry. Let me just go back here. Yeah. So, and, and how much here data? Uh, because you're you're collecting a lot of data points uh, on uh, on a client. So, uh, the, the magic question, kind of, you know, how much data? If we bring it down to a per client, are are we eventually collecting on a daily basis? Um, I can I, we, I can look it up. Uh, we yeah. can go in and check as an example. Uh, this is an, an example of um, one of my customers, and uh, let, we could just go and check. So let's uh, go up here. Now, Johnny, Johnny can again start blurring the video before yeah. sharing it online. <laughs> so here you can see that it's uh, around 300, 250, 300 megabytes. Yeah. So okay. and in this in this case here, it is around uh, 13 gigabyte. And I think this customer has around 500 uh, computers. OK. So 13 gigabyte and it runs uh, on a daily basis. Of course, in the weekends, people have closed down their computers. So let's say 20, 20 times uh, a month. Uh, so it's, uh, it, it's not much data that comes in. Yeah. You can see here that the, the data that is the most is the uh, installed patches uh, the, and the, the last uh, update uh, and it also collects like application from the registry, uh, some data from the event logs and stuff like that. So it is it is coming in. Um, so it, I think there are 18 different collections that I'm doing and I'm sending the data into a data collection endpoint and then it runs into the pipeline. Uh, and on top of the pipeline, you can do some magic stuff with transformations uh, if you want to filter the data out. But I'm actually yeah. doing the filtering on the endpoint uh, down here in my uh, in, in it's part of the 25 functions that I have developed, mm -hmm. and um, and then it goes into the log analytics workspace, and then on top of that you have the workbooks and the and the and the dashboards, and you can of course also do some um, alert rules if you if there is something that you wanna you wanna have you know be notified around so. I'm I'm basically collecting some information that Microsoft does not collect out of the box. For yeah. example, uh, bit logger information, uh, who is a member of the local admin uh, group, um, and uh, it could be uh, you know the uh, for example the uh, I'm running a get mp preference command, so it dumps the actual configuration of a defender or get MP computer status, it will dump that uh, configuration as well. So it, it it's just a running a lot of uh, VMI or mm -hmm. uh, PowerShell commandlets and then uh, sending the data up the stream. Yeah. Okay, so, so you basically have locally, let's call it a sort of an agent which runs yes. uh, yeah. a, bu a bunch of PowerShell that, that I also could extend if I have yeah. a need for yeah. Additional info, you then consolidate your data locally. You send it up to yeah. Log Analytics into the uh, endpoint, and there you do further processing yeah. to then store it in uh, Log Analytics yeah. custom tables. <clears throat> yeah. Cool. But 
But why this is really uh, cool is because I'm actually solving some of the challenges that are included in the lock uh, ingestion API. And as you can see here from the adoption, it, it can really help a lot of people, or it has already helped a lot of people. And I have seen many uh, uh, ways that customer have adopted this. So for example, in Germany, there is a large production uh, enterprise company that are using this to monitor their production. And, um, yeah. and, and you know, a lot of different ways. I've seen examples where people are taking uh, IBM TSM uh, logs, uh, bringing it into this engine and throwing it up and then doing some uh, cool stuff uh, with dashboards and KQL on top of this. So it's, uh, I know it's not the topic for this, but, but it kind oh, of brings right. me, it brings me onto the, the next thing that I want to touch on. Uh, yeah. Which is, um, so again, uh, for me, <clears throat> you know, working with KQL and working with logs is something that I find is really cool. And and where I have used it for, besides traditional hunting is also to use it in different ways, like uh, for uh, automations and stuff like that. But before jumping into this, I just want to introduce myself. Um, mm -hmm. um, as, as, as you were saying, my name is Morten and I'm from Denmark. I'm an MVP in security and also an Azure hybrid MVP. And, and uh, I'm, a, yeah, I'm a, a big fan of Microsoft, as you can see here. And I, I hope and uh, I really like uh, working with the technologies. I do a lot of Azure. I do a lot of security uh, on a daily uh, basis. Um, I'm also one of the co-founder of uh, Experts Live Denmark. Uh, so a group that we started recently. Um, so uh, I hope to also see some of you guys in Copenhagen next year in March, where we are doing our our first conference on the 20th of March. So cool. again, uh, what I wanted to show you guys is uh, give you some uh, introduction to uh, Azure Resource Graph uh, and also to show a cool solution that I have built, which actually is a, a cool thing that you just showed with the Custo 100 plus, uh, I forget the name you, you showed. Uh, so I've actually built something similar uh, and I'm going to show that to you guys today. Everything that you are seeing here will be available, uh, and I'm going to show a, a QR code at the end. Uh, everything you can download, including all the demos. Uh, so, and uh, I have also published a PowerShell module that you're going to see. It is, of course, available in PowerShell Gallery. So it is out there, and you can uh, play around with it, uh, it uh, tonight if you want. So, again, what we have here is a, a hidden feature. I would say a hidden feature because Azure Resource Graph is a, a service that many do not know about. And what the, the, what it really does, it, it, it solves some problems that, that I have uh, if I work with Azure on a daily basis. Because if I need to understand my infrastructure in my Azure infrastructure, like get me a list of all the storage account which has public access, or get me a list of all the VMs which are in the tag of production, or get me a list of the RBACs where person X has gotten permissions. If I, if I don't have an index, then I need to traverse each of the different resources from the different resource providers within Azure. And of course, the performance will be really, really slow. So secondly, if I don't have an index, it would also be very costly for me because I would need to basically do a pull of all the properties and build up my own repository um, and store the information. And it will increase my uh, local cost if I need to do kind of a snapshot of the properties uh, on my own. So what Microsoft has done is to build a, a free service 
which is called ARC, and it is with the ARC with a G and not ARC with a C, as you probably also know is another word that we see. So it is an index, and and now and this service is free, and, and that's not uh, something that we normally see in, in Azure. Normally, you have to pay for everything, but this is actually a free service, and it it is constantly being you know changed all the time. More and more resource providers are being added into this index. So you will see uh, that the product team are adding more, and I'm working very closely with the product team to uh, to add more data into this. Um, and, and you'll see some really exciting things coming out uh, soon, and, 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 and things are dropping and coming out. Uh, and and, and th I'm really happy about this. So, and again, KQL is the language that is being used, and it is something which so you can query this language very fast, and and it will it will come back with the with the data. So what are the use cases? What is the why? Why do we? What can we use this for? When I initially learned about using Arc, it was uh, because I needed it in my automation. So for example. Uh, uh, what are the uh, management groups that I have in my environment? Or what are my uh, subscriptions that I have? So I needed to have a way to, to retrieve that in a fast way. And then to use that data for my targeting or my scoping. Another angle to this would be change tracking. So who did what change when? That is also very important. And this is where ARC, so whenever a change is happening inside Azure, this change will be written into the ARC as a change, and we can use it to document who did what change, uh, and data will come in very, very fast. The SLA, you would say, says within five minutes. In my experience, it comes very fast. And, and, and it is much faster than five minutes. It's, it's basically instantly. It's, it's not instantly, of course, but, but it's very, very fast uh, when it comes in. So you'll see the change very fast. Yeah. Now Actually, I have a question. This. Yes. Um, if I may interrupt you quickly. Of course. So, uh, I mean, I, I believe I know the answer, but I think it, it, it's not quite well documented. So, if I'm playing like we all do writing in our demo test tenant, you know, I mean, we're the boss of everything. Uh, I'm the boss of my management group underneath there. I have my subscriptions. Um, so I also built this beautiful little query, you know, to actually uh, join the Azure Activity Logs subscription IDs with the subscriptions that I see. Um, to actually identify whether I might have any subscriptions that are not being streamed into Sentinel, right? So yes. you you build you, you build that uh, KQL query. You don't think of anything back. You know you bring it to a customer, and there, of course, you know Alex is no more the boss. I'm just, you know, seeing what I'm supposed to see uh, yes. as uh, things are good. Yeah. Um, so I I believe uh, you know that. Uh, if I understand this correct, but, but I don't know how to do it. If in log analytics, I query the ARC resources, uh, is that actually in real time going to check what I'm actually are able supposed to see by means of, you know, looking at my RBAC? Because I solved yes. the issue in one tenant yeah. where I said, okay, just give me read rights just for the sake of fun. To all uh, on the management group, yeah, and then yes. suddenly uh, I saw everything. Yeah, um, you just now, need to have read permission for this. Yeah, yeah. Now uh, uh, that brought me to the second topic. I mean, I personally don't need uh, those permissions, but I was thinking of you know writing analytic uh, rules. Uh, but then I noticed that in Microsoft Sentinel, um, I cannot use any analytic rules that you know have this arc resource embedded now i i thought i'd be smart uh, because microsoft sentinel also runs in a certain context 
um, I believe so. So um, I added that, uh, you know, principle to the management group, uh, but without any luck. Um, so if you happen to, to speak to those guys, um, yeah, it would, would be great to understand, uh, you know, why we can't run any queries with the ARC uh, resources mentioned uh, in any analytic rules. So uh, I, know, I'm you're... actually going to touch on that. I have a, okay. I have a few slides uh, at the yeah. end where I cool. will actually uh, show uh, how you can do that. Uh, yeah. So, so okay. I, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll show yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so it's it's a it's really cool a new feature that was released uh, recently where you can where you can uh, view query uh, arc resources from within uh, log analytics. Um, at the moment, it's not possible to do it the other way, but uh, but it is possible <clears throat> to, uh, to, uh, to 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 uh, to ask to ask. Uh, let, 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 let's just uh, touch on this uh, right now. It's fine. Uh, this is an example <clears throat> where I'm doing a query. As you can see here, the insights metric is a table that is inside the log analytics. So, and inside log analytics, there are two ways that you can do permission. So you can do it with our bag, or you can do it with the, the workspace level. And, uh, and the only requirement that we have here is that we, we have read permission. Uh, for the resources, so uh, that means that again, uh, the uh, the index. If you wanna uh, retrieve information, <clears throat> for example, in this case here, I'm uh, getting tag values from VMs. So again, if you have a management group layer and and way down here, you have the VMs. Uh, then you need to have a uh, read permission all the way down to the resource or or the resource provider. Uh, and once you have that, then you can actually use the data. Uh, and, and this is an example where I'm saying, uh, find all the uh, the um, CPU uh, data and, uh, and do some filtering to only show uh, production VMs in this case here. And I have another example here where you can see that the query is actually turned around. So in this case, I was doing the log analytics and then doing a lookup into ARC, whereas in this case here, I'm doing the ARC and then doing a lookup into an, a log analytics table. So in this case here, I'm saying find all the resources which size is standard B, uh, of of a starts with, and then take the average of the CPU from the last seven days, and then uh, show this. So this is a really cool feature, and uh, Oren, who built this, has been working on this for around uh, one and a half years, and and uh, I'm really happy to see how they they have built this, um, because now we can we can really benefit from this. One of the things that I have asked him is to, the next step would be really cool if we can do some, some stuff where we can hunt the this, this same data from within the Azure environment, but from the security portal. But, uh, but we're not there at the moment uh, right now. So, but so this is how we can do it. And, and we can actually uh, uh, use this in a really cool way where we can uh, retrieve the data uh, and and do some uh, great filtering around this. And and once we have this uh, filtering, we can of course also uh, add um, uh, like um, for example, we can just show it here. So this is an example where we can uh, take this query. And then, as in this case, I'm showing it as numbers. And, and here we can do a, a pin uh, for a dashboard, which is pretty standard, uh, where we can show the data out on the dashboard. But, but in the dashboard, it's basically all the queries are dead. We cannot you know, do some things around it. It's, it's, uh, if we want to do some more fun, we want to do it inside a workbook. And, and in this case here, I'm pinning the, the data to a workbook. And 
I'm going to show here where you can see that that uh, now instead of doing it uh, with numbers, I want to do it with some colors and 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 maybe have some uh, some bars uh, with some different colors, uh, and then we can also uh, pin this, uh, for example, to a dashboard as well. Um, so it is really cool how we can do this and and uh, and we can integrate this. Um, so uh, let's just do, so here you can see an example where we're just taking the query and, and building a, a workbook uh, instead. So let me go back again uh, to, to this. Uh, is that OK? Um, and, sure. and, and show uh, some, some things here. So again, you get the picture here of why or, or wh where we can use this. So there are some great, uh, you know, there's some, there's some different angles to this. So for example, uh, I, I mentioned the change tracking. I also, uh, you're going to see some health state monitoring uh, in a few uh, seconds. Um, you can also use this for inventory purpose and, and configuration purpose uh, so that we can find uh, find all the, the resource uh, resources that are placed in Western Europe and and with this naming convention or um, and from a security side of it, uh, an optimization side of it, or it could be cost. It could also be find all the disks that are not attached to a VM that we maybe can delete or find all the public IPs that are not associated with a network adapter or find all the app uh, plans that are not available at the moment um, or find all the storage account which is not running TLS uh, 1.2 and stuff like that. So there are different audience or, or, or teams within the IT department that can actually benefit from using ARC from different angles uh, here. And this is the uh, list of sources that you can use to retrieve these data. So basically what you can see here is that you can, you can call into ARC from all these different, um, uh, you know, platforms like from .NET, from Java, from Ruby, from REST, from CLI, uh, from PowerShell, from the portal, of course. And if you, if you go into the portal here, what you will see here is that, uh, and on the left side, you can see that you have the categories of data that you have, you can access. And for example, if I scroll into the compute, You'll see, for example, virtual machines, and if I just click on it, it will actually bring over uh, the, uh, the, uh, um, the, the, the category of data that I'm retrieving here. And if you scroll down, you can uh, see all the different properties, and you can see the structure of the data uh, within this. And in this case, it, it was not a very big environment. It returned six resources. But even if you have, you know, 1500 servers, it will come as fast as it comes right here. So it's a very, very fast uh, platform that, that is really scalable. On the left side, again, uh, you can also see all the tables that are available in here. You can see in the middle there says patch assessment resources, patch installation resources. That is actually Azure Update Manager that stores its data inside Arc. And, and, and a lot of different tools are storing their data in here. So policies as another example. I can actually ask R, give me a list of all the policy assignments that are there, or ask a Defender for Cloud, uh, what are the recommendations that are not compliant? I can actually retrieve that from ARC uh, and, and you, I have some demos, uh, if, if time permits, we can, where we can see this in, in real action. So it is really cool how we can retrieve all these data and, and we can retrieve it from many different uh, ways. This is example of the uh, query from a CLI uh, command where we are just, you know, uh, uh, logging in, in this case, on the um, on the portal, <clears throat> getting validated, um, and 
then I can take my command that I want to uh, the, the KQL uh, that I want to run and and uh, I can run it and it will retrieve the uh, the information uh, uh, back uh, and I can use it uh, in my script uh, if I want to do something on a Linux environment for example uh, so this is an example of how you can do it with a Klee. Of course, you can also do it with PowerShell. And in this case here, you can see that I'm retrieving policy uh, assignments, as I said, uh, as an example. So you have the policy resources and you have the, the assignments. And typically, you have a, a thousand records in a page. So in this case, I'm doing pagination because of uh, to, to handle uh, multiple uh, pages in the response. So you can retrieve this. This is, for example, all the Azure policies you can also retrieve from this. Uh, so again, you can retrieve the data from many different platforms. But, but moving on, what I really was missing here was a way to help the community by building a PowerShell module where I'm actually kind of taking co-responsibility of storing a lot of cool queries inside this Azure Resource Graph uh, PS module that I have built. So uh, what it includes is that it, it, this is, think of it as that I have made a cool query and I want to share it to the community. And a lot of people have made really cool queries out there. And all these queries are actually stored within this PowerShell module. So whenever there is an update uh, to a, a syntax in the query, I'm updating the queries that are used, or I'm adding new queries to this module. And that means that you all of you can actually leverage all these queries that I have built and, and, and all people have built, and we can all benefit from it. So moving on, I want to show how this actually works in real life. On the left side, yeah, you can see that I have a, a, a building query called get orphan disk. So in this case here, I have a, a query that actually uh, contains the actual query. And now I'm just going to give your brain started to show some ideas of how you can use it. And then I'll jump into how this actually works. So in this case here, get orphan public IPs. That means I have three public IPs which are not attached to a network adapter. This is the third example where I can use a one-liner, uh, get all the Azure Secure Score subscriptions uh, out and, um, and then export it to a spreadsheet in Excel. So here I'm taking the variables and I'm exporting all the subscriptions, uh, the, the secure score out to um, um, an Excel spreadsheet. This is a fourth example. All the extensions, when I deploy that to all my servers, sometimes the, uh, the, it fails. So something can go wrong. So in this case here, I want to retrieve all the, uh, the, uh, the, the failed ones and I want to uh, see what, what uh, extension failed. And maybe I also want to export the data out to a spreadsheet to understand you know, from what machines did it fail, or um, what uh, is it uh, a certain OS version where it fails and stuff like that. So in, in, I have created this, and, and, and inside this one line, there's actually a query that are stored in here. And, and, and I, I can actually uh, just uh, stop this video here just to show it uh, to you guys here. So again, uh, let me just move on here to, to this so that you can uh, see how it works. So um, I'm just, here you can actually see that I'm starting up this in interactive mode. And let me just make this a little bigger here so we can see it. So uh, a lot of different people have contributed with different queries. And if you scroll into this, you can see that there are more than 100 queries that are in here. 
And and basically what I do, for example, let's say that I want to see, for example, my defender for cloud plans that are enabled. Then I can go in here and then you can see here that it will uh, it will show the actual query that I'm running. I can see the context that I'm running the uh, query under. So in this case here, I'm running it under my context, and I can also run it using an app, um, an Azure app. Um, here I'm also showing what is the syntax to run this in a, in an automatic way. I can just copy this line. So if I want, instead of using the interactive made to do it, I can go down here and run this command line, and it will return the result to me uh, out uh, back to me. So um, I have added a lot of different uh, uh, really cool stuff in here, which are uh, giving uh, help uh, from different angles. It can be used for security purposes. It can be used for cost optimization. It can be used for automation uh, to, to retrieve scoping data. It can be used for auditing uh, purposes. Uh, compliance purposes, um, and and it can really uh, help it, uh, benefit this, and and you can run this in in in, in many different ways, um, and 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 again, this is uh, just some examples to to uh, to get you guys going, and and there are a lot of great uh, things that you can run. I actually want to show uh, one of the uh, you can also run custom queries in here. So instead of using the predefined queries, you can take one of the queries that, that I have added to this, and then you can customize it to fit your needs. And then you can just run the queries like this. And in this case, I'm running it against the, the tenant. It can also run against a, a management group as, a, as an example. It can be run against a, a subscription as another example. You can do some filtering, take the first five records. Uh, in this case here, uh, I'm uh, running it under an app uh, credentials. Um, and, uh, and, and this is a cool thing that was added recently into R. So <clears throat> what I was uh, wanted to achieve here is to actually get um, the, uh, the, the, you know, get the, uh, let me just close this down here. So in this case here, what I want to do is to retrieve all the RBAC assignments uh, that are in my tenant. So in, here you can see this is all the RBAC assignments that I have in my environment right now. And if we go in here and see how many it, it actually was, it was 281 uh, RBAC assignments. So, but the problem with this uh, data that I'm experiencing here is that I can only see the uh, principal ID. I cannot see the display name. So let's say that I want to enrich this data with the actual display name of this service principal. Then this is an example of me connecting to uh, using graph, getting a lot of different uh, resources uh, from like uh, users, uh, groups, service principals, and let's run this as an example here. So now I'm retrieving data from my uh, from my entry ID about my environment, and then I'm um, uh, going through my array of data, and then I'm uh, enriching all the data with the um, the display name that that is being added uh, into the the data and. Uh, so let's see here. So now it's getting the uh, groups um, and it will also get the service principles, the users, and then it will enrich the array of data. And now I have a, a complete list where I have the uh, display name. So, and uh, let's see here if there are any data in we can show. Let's see if we have some here. Boom. 
Allah. Let's see here. It actually should have uh, shown some uh, display names here, but it looks like it rose the... Yeah, that's really strange. That's how it goes. Let's just see here again. I want to do the whole demo here. Two seconds. Let's do it again. So here we are having uh, from the whole tenant 691, and it's enriching the data. And, and as you can see here, this is the whole query that it makes of the RBAC. It's a really cool query. And uh, let's see, we can see the data coming out. If it has enriched the data. It actually should show, uh, let me just see here. Here we have it. You see, here we have the display name of the managed uh, identity. So now we can actually see the principal display name. So it is in the data, it has been enriched. So instead of having the actual principal object, now we actually can do some magic where we can see, okay, in this case, it was um, um, a managed uh, identity. So for example, in this case here, this is, for example, the policies that I have deployed using infrastructure as code. So it will create a, a managed identity and the managed identity has some RBAC roles so in this case, it is a SQL security manager, and, and it has permissions on this level here. So again, it is just a really cool thing how you can, you can use the data uh, from uh, the ARC environment. And one of the things that I'm really uh, hoping uh, that will be added soon is also PIM data. So again, all the eligible permissions that we have today, it would be really cool if we have a, a way to extract that from ARC and not just as it is right now, where it is all the active assignments that are in there. So um, so let's say that we, I, I would really be very happy to see that the eligible permissions will be uh, available inside this as well. Um, one of the other things that I wanted to show you guys, and it was a, another cool way uh, to use this, uh, which is for health monitoring. So on the left side here, what you'll see here is a simple workbook where you can see that my DC3 is showing as available. Uh, it is with green. And then on the right side, what you'll see here is that I'm stopping uh, the VM. So and a simple thing as availability monitoring can be really hard because you have two factors that you need to take into account. And one factor is the guest that can provide you insight about the, uh, you know, is the machine running? And it's typically based on logs. But once you have actually closed down the VM, you're dependent on the host being able to send data to you about the status of this machine. So how ARC works is that if I change this, uh, the status, now you can see that the status has changed to stop. And then on the left side, I'm going over and refreshing it. And you can see right away that, that now I can actually, that because the, the, the state has changed and the uh, index has been updated, then you can actually see that now I can use this for health monitoring. So this is just a query that I'm showing there on the left. 
where I'm sending this and querying a table called health resources. And then I'm just doing some fun thing about some colors on top of this. So again, this is a, a cool way to also use key, uh, C, you know, KQR. And, and let me just stop it here. So, so again, this is the query that you can use, and then you can actually retrieve the, the health state of a VM. And, and, and I think that is a, a cool way so of how we can also use this. So it's not just for you know, uh, security purposes. We can use it also to, to deal with some operational uh, tasks. Uh, we can use it for cost optimization. So for example, all the recommendations that are including in the Azure Advisor are also available. So we can retrieve it from, uh, from ARC. And once it's in ARC, that means that we can do some, some cool stuff. We can do some alerting. We can do some dashboarding around it. And, and we can target the information uh, to the right audience. Um, these, the, the PowerShell model that I have built does also run on, for example, uh, Ubuntu. So this is just an example where all the queries that you just saw before, and there as I said, there are more than 100 queries that you can start to use. And, and as you can see here, I have a, a query that actually will automatically detect if there are any updates available. So if I'm adding more queries or I'm add, changing some of the syntax because there has been some change in the platform, then it will automatically update all the queries. So you will always have access to to the latest queries in here and the, the updated and the newest queries. And you can run all the queries that, that you have and you can you can use that also on a on an Ubuntu machine as an example. So it will work for you and it will also work on a core machine. If you don't have a, a, a GUI, uh, you can also uh, use this uh, to actually run all the, the queries uh, from in, in this uh, environment as well. So just uh, some things that I'm, uh, I'm working on, and I promised uh, you that I wanted to show the uh, barcode as well. So if you are um, interested in working with this, uh, grab your phone out and, and take a picture of this, uh, and, and we'll share it afterwards uh, as well. Um, I have a lot more demos uh, inside uh, this uh, QR here. This is actually a a full 60 minutes uh, presentation where I'm showing uh, a ton more demos of how I use this. Uh, for example, I use it for a Defender for Cloud uh, where I'm, I'm extracting information. I'm building uh, some, uh, some cool uh, spreadsheet of all the recommendations uh, so that I can send it out to the right teams and they can prioritize the recommendations, and we don't need to have everyone having permissions uh, in my Azure environment, but we can extract a, a snapshot with this. Another example that I'm showing is a, a daily backup status mail. So it, 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 it will scan my entire infrastructure of my Azure uh, with all the recovery walls and all the backup walls, and it will show and give a, a daily backup state uh, saying how many jobs uh, completed successfully, how many uh, jobs uh, failed. I also have queries that will show, give me a list of all the VMs that are not protected with a backup, or give me a list of all the storage accounts which are not protected by a backup. So you again, all these things are included in here so you can you can start to, uh, to, to, to play around and consider it as an accelerator for you to get started with this So, and, and, and a repository to, to work with this. Any questions? Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, definitely very, very cool solution. Um, yeah. Uh, for me and for the community, uh, a very simple question. And for that, I'm going to quickly share my screen just to kind of uh, recap. 
So when we talk about those Azure resources, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. We can access them, for example, here from the Azure Resource Graph Explorer. Yeah, can you right? zoom in a bit, Alex? Oh, yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah. Uh, so you. this is where if I don't know fake well, you know, I can here select any resource like compute disks. Yeah, exactly. Um, and as I execute that, that is basically executing in real time, right? Yeah. Uh, so this is not a table by means of, you know, the data was stored there like 10 minutes ago or so, right? It, it is an index. So yeah. all the, it, it, all, whenever there is a change inside the Azure environment, it will update yeah. the index. Okay. Yeah. So Good. it is not traversing all the resources during the query. It okay. is traversing the index. Okay. But it's kind of an internal index. Yes, uh, because I, I took a look at, uh, you know, whether there are timestamps or so, um, and I can't find one. Now, a big $1,000 question is, okay, so this is the resource graph. Now, last KQL session, and also today, we talked about that other thing that now from Log Analytics, right, um, I can also query. So this basically, if we do uh, for, the, for those among us who pay attention, uh, we will see I have seven records, so seven disks. And if I do the same here, uh, when I run ARC resources, where type is Microsoft Compute Disks, uh, I get exactly the same data. Exactly. Is my explanation correct when I say that this ARC uh, operator, let's call it like that, or, or placeholder, Mm. It's nothing else than basically kind of the bridge to talk yeah. to what's over here. Correct. Yeah. Okay. And you also mentioned because um, maybe a function would uh, or yeah, yeah a bridge. Yeah. Yeah. I was trying to find out whether it's somewhere in here. You know, as a classic Microsoft Graph, uh, Microsoft uh, function, but. Yeah, uh, log analytics, but that's not. It's kind of an no. internal command. Yeah, it is an external um, that translates it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, again for the curious, of course, you know there was a ton of more things I was expecting to see, uh, and I guess very helpful to use uh, is this reference. Uh, you agree? Yeah. yeah, and I have taken all these references that you actually see in this. Uh, a lot of them uh, I actually added uh, into my uh, solution. Yeah. So uh, it's um, I, I cannot promise that all of them are in there, but uh, mm -hmm. I have at, at, when I did the initial coding, I searched yeah. on the web and found some really cool stuff, and I've added it into here as well. So yeah. so again, it is to people that are new to this, it will hopefully uh, help uh, to get started, uh, and yeah. also get expired with some cool stuff that you can do with this uh, and some really um, some cool uh, queries um, I can actually show I have also added some of the queries on uh, my blog uh, so for example if you go to let me just uh, yeah. find Are you some ready? examples I'm just going to show yeah. my screen here uh, so <clears throat> as I mentioned one of the things that I have here on my blog MortonKnutsen.net is this uh, automation where I'm extracting all the Defender for uh, Cloud recommendations. And then on top of that, I'm building a 19 uh, Excel tables and pivot tables on top of this. And then I'm extracting all the information and building some queries that look similar to this, where you can actually filter the data and you can give it to people and you can, you know, so so there are some really cool stuff. But if you scroll down here, you'll see some of the queries that I have built, which are really, uh, yeah, tough ones uh, here where we're doing some extend, some queries, some joins and uh, doing, yeah, looking up uh, a lot of different things. Some of them are really uh, heavy uh, and 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 it is included here and uh, I'm also writing here that it's uh, it will take some time because the data set is, is very large because 
it for example if you have um for example one of the uh, tables include uh, for example vulnerability assessment and under the vulnerability assessment there is a sub assessment which include all the uh, the 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 queries for each of these sub assessment and then if you time set with all the resources that you have that means that you have a lot of data that you have to traverse through here uh, so so again some of these queries will actually uh, can, can do the magic and and it's all coming from arc so inside arc you have a table called security resources where you have a type uh, called assessment and then you can actually uh, work with the data so so again for me this is great because some of these recommendations that are included in the defender for cloud are uh, can be targeted for a specific audience like give me a list of all the recommendations targeted for the uh, sql guys or mm -hmm. the network guys and then i can it's easier to send them a spreadsheet because then they they don't need to have read permission to my whole Azure environment, um, and we can do some filtering. We can prioritize. We can uh, create tasks from it uh, in uh, in service now or whatever we want to do. So this is just a, a sample of how we can extract and work with the data, and and we can automate everything uh, using a K twelve. Yeah, and the cool thing is, you know, uh, compared to the old days where we used to have, you know, ops manager and agents everywhere, mm. uh, right? I mean, to a large extent, that, that information is already available, let's call it out of the box, right? If yeah. I deploy a VM in Azure, yeah. uh, you know, I get that information. So yeah. uh, I basically can pull all the information out of the cloud instead of having to yeah, if I bring it to an extreme, you know, like in the old days, we would do remote PowerShell, WMI, yeah. <laughs> queries on every machine. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, definitely I use it also. Cool. For, yeah. for example, one of my customers asked me to build a, a query, which will allow me to uh, to optimize their cost in a way where they get an alarm saying that now the amount of security data, for example, has, or any table basically, has increased with more than 20% compared to an average of the last seven days. Yeah. So let's say that suddenly the log data increases with more than 20%, then we all know that something is really uh, not right. Uh, and it could be some application that are sending millions of data into the event log. And instead of waiting for the bill that to come when the month is over, maybe we can get an alert so that we can actually detect what is going on before, uh, you know, once it happens. So, yeah. and again, it's just a K12 query doing the magic and, and you can get the result out and you can act on it before it becomes really expensive. Yeah. Now, the, the solution you, you mentioned in the first part of today's show was, you know, the client inspector. Yeah. Where, where you know, you, you gather a lot of information. Yes. Uh, but I guess on the other hand, depending on where those resources live, uh, that information might already uh, be available. So you yes. also showed a lot of interesting workbooks. Are you considering kind of or are, are you kind of maintaining, you know, what data is actually important to still collect locally because it isn't available versus yeah. that information uh, uh, provided uh, the system is either hosted yeah. in Azure or is Azure Arc managed? Like yeah. I don't need to collect that information yeah. anymore. I I am I I have that and uh, and. Let me rephrase it because I have customers that are not using, for example, uh, the, the security portal. Uh, yeah. So, for example, I have a customer that has five thousand clients, and they're not huge on Microsoft. They don't they don't have much of the you know the E five and stuff like that. So, yeah. in that case, they also need to work with them, and yeah. uh, and and you can some of the dashboards that I have in in the versions um, many of my customers are using are actually taking the data from the security portal and, and, and doing some things. So, 
So in case Microsoft provides some information, then I'm leveraging those information. Yeah. So for example, the, uh, the new additions around firmware or uh, you know, updates or uh, certificates or uh, browser yeah. extensions, all these things will be there. Uh, yeah. So, uh, but but again, it's not a, a for me important that I'm doing a duplicate of, of information yeah. that are already in there. So, for example, information about BitLogger, you would think, why do I not have a place to find all the machines that are not protected with BitLogger? Or who is a member of the local administrators group on my machines, as another mm -hmm. example. And these are just things that I'm collecting and and yeah. and, and, and throwing it up. Uh, another thing that I want to touch on is some of the, uh, for example, if you have the security portal, if Microsoft releases an update yesterday, my security portal will be read all the time because it will show that I'm, you know, yeah. not compliant. Where just understand my, enterprise uh, patching cycles. Yeah, yeah so yeah. I'm taking, you know, life cycle into consideration. So I'm showing everything that was published more than 40 days ago. And those are the gaps that I'm focusing on, not the ones that are released yeah. within the 40 days. Yeah, gotcha. A small question from yeah. uh, Sergey. Yes. He asks, so what is the name of the PowerShell module? Yeah. So yeah, let me just show it to you here. I actually, uh, so yeah. if you're considering the art module, it is this one here, Azure Resource Graph PS. Um, so share if again? you, S A C No, you resource. have to share your screen. Uh. Oh, I didn't share my screen, sorry. Uh, you, yeah, sorry, here we go. That's probably gonna yes. go a little easier if I share my screen. If you have your phone out, so yeah, you can, uh, you know, shoot this uh, QR code, or you can search on the PowerShell gallery for this one here. Okay, we'll do. Thank you very much. Yeah, I already scanned it. I I managed to get informa some information, but just wanted to double check. Thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, very good. And <clears throat> as I said, the other one that I started out uh, showing uh, is uh, called Clan Inspector. And if you go up into your browser here, and just type in clientinspector.net. Uh, it will actually, uh, let me just show it here, clientinspector.net here. I it think, of course, also added to the show notes. Yeah, uh, so yeah. <laughs> it, it will uh, go into this one here. And this, uh, this uh, client inspector here is using a, another PowerShell module that I built, which is uh, called uh, AC, uh, let me just uh, see if I can. So that is this module here. So that is the other module that I showed in the beginning. And uh, you can see here that a lot of downloads uh, already. Uh, actually, next month, I'm going to uh, to Redmond and meeting with the, the whole product team there. And uh, I'm giving them a lot of feedback uh, during that session. And one of the things that I'm also a, a, a giving is a cake, so we're going to celebrate these uh, numbers here and, and have some fun around it as well. So again, Clan Inspector is just, you know, a kind of a showcase of how you can bring data back uh, from any source uh, and, and then you can uh, work with the dashboards and you can do some fun thing around it. Uh, and it's actually a great way also to get introduced to the new log ingestion API and also to work with the new things inside data collection rules where you can do some really cool stuff. And, and recently, Microsoft announced the end of date, the, the end of support for the old method. So uh, if you're still running Microsoft Monitoring Agent, MMA, you should definitely be consider to 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 uh, start migrating those uh, to use uh, AMA uh, if you are not already there, and and I just wanted to uh, to highlight that if you are interested in that uh, context, then uh, check out uh, some of the uh, blogs that I have built. Uh, for example, this one here, Master Azure Logging in Depth. 
It's actually a summary of 19 blogs that will actually introduce how you can migrate to, uh, to the new log, uh, log analytics version 2 that I call it. Uh, so it will both touch on the endpoint uh, solution with the AMA, and it will also introduce this uh, module that I have built and, and help you uh, to, uh, to start working on the, a the API side of it. So it will um, hopefully introduce this and, and actually just a, a little uh, side story around this. Microsoft has actually also added this. So this is the uh, uh, learn uh, document. And as you can see here, uh, it was actually added uh, by Microsoft into the official documentation as well. So I'm really proud of that. But but uh, again, um, so hopefully it can help you guys out there if you're if you're interested in learning more about uh, logging and, and what you, you can you can do with that. Wow. You have a lot to share. That's, that's <laughs> awesome. So I'm, I'm going to ask you to, to drop uh, yeah, a quick note after the uh, session, and I'll make sure we have everything in the show notes so that those people who are watching this episode afterwards uh, yeah. also can benefit uh, from all your resources. Great, Morgan. That's uh, really an awesome job uh, you're doing here. Thank um, you. And yeah, yeah, yet another way how we can make use of uh, cake well in our everyday life. Yeah. Another small question from Hakim. Yeah. Do you happen to have any blogs that look into KQL queries that identity long running batch job that identify long running batch jobs? Uh, I don't think I have that. Uh, but if we, yeah, I don't know if it's possible to uh, to retrieve that, but but it's something that we should investigate, and I'll uh, look into it for you, see if we can uh, do something there. Uh, and you know, the art team is constantly adding more and more uh, stuff into this, um, and uh, and again, we can all uh, influence that as well. So I think it's just a matter of you know giving the feedback uh, back to the team. I'm meeting the art team on a, on a Monday on November 30. So I can bring that as well if uh, it's not there. So uh, so I know what they're working on right now and, and it will really be uh, helpful for, for a lot of us. Uh, I can promise you that. <laughs> cool, so yeah. yeah. Let's stay in touch, and uh, if you have ever any, uh, you know, updates, uh, you're always welcome to uh, return. Yeah, and uh, talk about any uh, updates you have. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm just gonna put up my LinkedIn and blog QR code here, if that can be of help to anyone. Uh, then uh, just uh, on the top, it's the QR code for my blog, and on on the bottom, it's the LinkedIn. Uh, feel free to connect with me or write or anything and uh, be more than happy to help. I already done it. I already send you a connection <laughs> request. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so uh, I right. think since we're running a bit out of time, I might have yeah. another question for you in the coming days. Yeah. Because a friend of mine is working on ingesting uh, API data into log analytics. Yeah. But he wants to deploy it as a uh, as a package, a solution in Sentinel. Yeah. But when you deploy uh, the data collection rules and identity, it takes about 15 minutes for it to uh, to work. Yeah. The question was if it's uh, possible to imp uh, make that process faster. It's the you know pipeline. Of. It's it's the pipeline that kicks in, and uh, it uh, it's the pipeline that sets up. Um, yeah. And the uh, and it, it is something that you will see that will change in the future. Uh, it will uh, become faster. And uh, what what the team is working on right now uh, is actually uh, around the um, also to monitor uh, things and also to monitor uh, that we can see data coming in. I just wanted to show uh, some picture here. 
So uh, with the guys that are in charge of this, uh, let me just scroll down here. This is uh, here, these two fellows here, this is Ivan. He's the guy who is responsible for your question. Uh, so he's uh, the go-to guy. This is Evgeny, and he's also in the pipeline team. And uh, I, and let me just find uh, another one here. Uh, so let me find. This is uh, Nick, Nick Keast. He is the guy uh, who is responsible for data collection rules. Uh, so And this is actually some of the other people from the Azure Monitor agent team. Uh, Shaona and, and uh, Jeff and, and so on. So, so, uh, so uh, if we uh, we if we can, uh, the pipeline will take some time because it will set up the, the the pipeline. Initially, when when that's actually when I do my presentation around this, I'm also doing it with a video because when you are in a in a session doing a conference. Uh, you don't want to wait uh, 30 minutes uh, for the pipeline to kick in. So I'm cheating a little, a little bit here uh, because of this. Mm. Uh, so uh, there's not much we can do around it uh, at the moment. Uh, it, it will take some time uh, for it to happen. Cool. Yeah. But again, it's a very good question. And and uh, as I said, uh, I... Uh, uh, I just want to show one more thing uh, because it's actually uh, we are here to to give some feedback back to the product team and 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 again I really encourage you guys to uh, to help me if you have anything like you just brought up there uh, let's uh, bring it back um, to to the team and and uh, hopefully we can uh, you know improve things so that it, it becomes a little better. And and uh, I just wanted to uh, to show here uh, the uh, so for example this is uh, the meeting that I had with with the product team and as you can see here uh, the whole topic of this is actually uh, how can we what are some of the struggles uh, how can we improve uh, where what where are the uh, the you know where are we good where are we bad how can we do things. And then, as I said, uh, we're also going to do some celebration with cake. Uh, so, uh, so I'll bring this uh, question back to uh, to the team, and uh, hopefully, I can uh, give you some feedback there. Oh, all right. Okay. Once again, thank, thank you very much for thank all you. the insights, uh, the demo, and yeah, I suggest we quickly rush through. Uh, our last uh, topic, uh, as we want to respect uh, uh, timings. Uh, I actually see some people already left, but we're, we're going to talk about it briefly anyway, just for the sake of the recording. Uh, so, yeah, Johnny, if you can bring up uh, the slide where. Yes. So, so I have a, uh, under the umbrella of what did we do this month? Uh, I actually have a very cheap one. Uh, yeah. You know, first, uh, let me set the context. Uh, hopefully, in your tenant, uh, you have, you know, disabled uh, uh, that setting where end users can consent applications. Uh, but yeah, for a long time, you know, that was just turned off. Uh, not sure if it's still the case uh, for a new tenant, but yeah, you know, this is definitely something you want to turn off because otherwise anyone can go to some website, you know, the user will be prompted and uh, without noticing it, he might give access to, you know, his whole, whole mailbox. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so that's why we want to turn this off. Now, I had a client um, actually last week, he said we need to do some cleanup. So on the next page, uh, yeah, we have this lovely thing in Microsoft 365 Defender called App Governance. Um, which, uh, as a side note, is uh, now 6 June this year, free for all E5 uh, customers. Um, and it gives us some more visibility in all those applications uh, in terms of uh, permissions uh, that are granted, uh, you know, how the permissions are granted, if it was admin consented or not. Um, and yeah, here I've highlighted those applications that are user consented. So. We want to delete or disable uh, all those user consent apps uh, and basically start from scratch. If anyone has a need to use it, uh, they can call 
uh, yeah, or just request it because now that we have turned off user consent, uh, the user will still get a prompt, um, but he will have to type in why he wants to have that. And then hopefully a global admin now and then visits <laughs> the Anchra ID portal <laughs> and sees that huge list of uh, requests pending. But there's also two options in this because you have the option that users can request it. Yeah. But on the other side, you can also uh, just block it and then the user will see the screen. Yeah. Hey, you're trying to access application ABC, contact your administrator and that way you won't get the huge list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or we just have to educate our admins that, you know, those in operations that they should have a process for periodically reviewing it. Or let me guess, there's definitely a KQL query for that that will <laughs> let us know when there is a new pending request coming in and we can automate that. Good. So now that we know um, what applications we want to clean up, uh, we want to, of course, first analyze uh, because we don't want to disrupt the business, uh, you know, who is using what. Now, that was a little bit of a challenge uh, because I cannot hunt that information. Um, so I went on the cheap. Uh, so I simply exported that list from the Defender portal. Um, I filtered by user consented. I copy pasted the column that has all the usernames and I simply quickly asked ChatGPT to create a data table for me uh, with those values. And then in the next step, I basically created my query uh, with all those names. Uh, and as you can see here, uh, now I'm basically uh, doing a join uh, against the signing locks uh, and non-interactive signing locks uh, because that will tell me, you know, the users that are actually still actively using it in the last, you know, couple of weeks uh, or 90 days, I think. Uh, so now I know, you know, about those apps that are still actively used. And on the next slide, I basically do the opposite. Uh, I run a query to base. Um, yeah. Uh, next slide here. is to seek one. <laughs> Ah, then I deleted it uh, by mistake. I, I thought I had doubled it, but you get it in the show notes. So the next uh, query, of course, is to find all those apps that we can delete easily because in the last 180 days, nobody bothered, you know, to actually make use of that app. So we're just going to, you know, remove, uh, delete those apps. Uh, so yeah, that's my quick and dirty solution leveraging KQL uh, this week. Cool. Yeah, the next one is basically a little continuation. We spoke about the Zeek logs uh, already a while ago. Um, but yeah, you know, customer question, we might have some internal mail traffic floating around that's not yet in the cloud. Uh, we wanted to understand where that's coming from. Uh, so now that we have SMTP uh, packet inspection uh, in Zeek, uh, you know, here's a simple query that basically lets you know, uh, you know, all the yeah SMTP internal traffic that's still floating in your environment. And yeah, you will probably bump into some appliances, some old school on-prem monitoring solutions, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Good. And the next thing I believe is yours, Johnny. Yeah, one last thing because the security guard already came to uh, warm me. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, here we are again. It's the security guard reminding me that the building is closing at eight o'clock. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, what I wanted to show was the CVE 38545, which is the curl one. And uh, I also wrote a blog post about it, how you can uh, detect the usage of curl. Because uh, what happened, there was a major uh, security thing going on with curl and 
there was a patch released on the 21st and uh, no one knew exactly what it was going to be, but everyone was a bit worried like, hey, am I running curl? Where does it run? Uh, how many devices are running it? So I wrote a blog post on uh, how we can fix this. So uh, in the end, what we did was I wanted first to see a bit like, hey, where are we running curl? So that's the basics. Ah, thank you, Alex. <laughs> Working as a team. <laughs> Awesome. So when we first look at curl, I can see we have a lot of events in my small tenant, which isn't that nice. So uh, what we want to do is we want to see uh, in this case where it's an initiating uh, process uh, for network link or where it's the original name because we have all these nice columns over here. So in this case, we have a file name. And also we have activity. So in this case, what we want to do is if we go to, uh, we can do uh, process original name. Just being a bit lazy because I have to type here. So we do search and then we want to return everything. And, uh, Process original version name is curl.exe. And now instead of all the thousands records, we got uh, seven records, <laughs> all from the device process events table. And uh, besides the original name, we can also uh, look for the current name. So we say, uh, or uh, uh, what is it? The initiating process. 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 Wow. In this way, we can search through all the data just on the, the specific column names. So we're over here now we have the, the column name for the device uh, network event and also for the image load events. And now we just have 77 records. So it's a quite easy way to finding uh, where uh, curl is running, where is it loaded, where does it do network activity. And you can also after that do just a distinct on uh, the device ID. In this case, you can easily see, hey, there's only one device running it. But now, as Alex showed, we also have the, the Zeek data, which is really nice. So we can do a device network events. And then the specific, we do where action type equals ends with, uh, uh, sorry, action type ends with uh, connection inspected because you have all these uh, columns you have the action type uh, ssh inspected dns inspected ssl inspected and now we have all the current connections and what we want to do is we say where additional fields contains curl and additional fields contains curl and yeah, this should be Right. Uh, uh, my data set is small. Over here we can see that there are, uh, in this case, two HTTP connections and one DNS connection, uh, which have something with curl. And to make it more specific, let's say we want to extend user agent equals sparse json and before i do this i'll show it first over here we have the additional fields and in the additional fields we have the user agent so we want
want to parse the user agent out of there. So we say additional fields dot user agent. And let's do a project reorder user agent to get it up front. So over here we can see that there were three curl related network events and one was from the application itself. And in this case, curl also shows really nicely the, the version it was running and it was running the older version because we didn't have the update while I wrote the blog post. And also this one is uh, a browser related user agent because uh, probably I want to uh, wanted to download the curl for the latest curl. Ah, I was looking for instructions to uh, see how we can download things with curl. <laughs> because usually I use wget and now I want to play with uh, curl. Cool. Well, so Johnny, I don't want you to sleep over in uh, in the <laughs> building. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I suggest uh, we call it a day uh, and otherwise follow up next time. Um, yes. Yeah. Thank you everyone for uh, staying at long for those that have been holding out. I uh, really appreciate uh, uh, the live audience. Uh, and of course, uh, again, a, a very big warm big thank you to you, Martin, for uh, all the things you've shown us today. Uh, definitely uh, a lot of inspiration. Uh, and I'm sure, uh, yeah, I know for myself, I'm going to take a look into uh, <laughs> in, in some of the stuff you've been doing here. Yeah. Thank Great. you very much for having me. <clears throat> Have a good evening, everyone. Okay. Bye, guys. You so. Bye-bye. Safe travels. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye.